Hey y'all, it's your queen Jay Lotus coming through right quick, right fast with a royale review. And today we are on the Bernie Mac show, episode two. And the name of this episode is Now You Got It. So it's season one, episode two. I'm going in order. Child, I didn't think we was gonna make it. I thought I was gonna have to pop cone because I started off watching it on Peacock. Now it ain't on Peacock no more. So I had to figure out where else it was. <sighs> Sounds too big. And child, Tubi be playing games too. So let me go ahead and not play games with the Bernie Mac show reviews because I'm be very upset if I can't do this. How I want to do this. Speaking of doing things, how I want to do it. As you can see, you know what I'm saying? I got, I got a new picture up. You know, I've been not showing my face for a good while. I kind of wanted to show my face today, but I ain't feel like, you know, going through all the presentation necessities of it all. So I just use a most recent picture. Which, y'all might get a story time from for the vacation that this picture came from. Anywho, let me stop rambling. I said I didn't say, it's going to be quite a few new tanks coming to the channel. New intros, new ways of me doing the videos. All this, that, and the third. New different types of content. All this, that, and the third. So, stay tuned and make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. And share. So that, you know what I'm saying, you can put everybody on game to what is about to come through. What I'm about to come through with. All that. Alright. And without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into this here review for... The Bernie Mac Show, season one, episode two. Now you got it. Tisk. So, child, this is the episode where, funny as hell, but this is the episode where Bernie Mac gets sick after trying so desperately hard to not get sick because he's trying to go to Vegas and do his thing, okay? But when you got kids, let alone small kids in the house, and baby, I come to find this out through observation of my friends who got kids. I got a friend that stay sick because her kids, Loki Haki, Stay sick now, child. You know, they be immune system. But when you when you a child, you young like that, your immune system is not fully developed. And then other folks and their kids, they don't be doing everything that they supposed to have needs to be done with their kids all the time. And things be happening and they get passed around. And then the parents got it. Keep your kids at home when they sick. If you're going to send them to school, child, get them some immune support tea or something, honey. But put them on a mask, okay? We learned that. We learned that in the past couple of years. Put them on a mask. But all that's beside the point right now. <laughs> let's get into the specificities of the scenes so it starts off with bernie mac doing his confessional you know we already covered in episode one review if you ain't seen it make sure you see it it's a whole playlist okay get into it yeah so starts off with bernie mac doing his confessional he is clearly sick as a dog clearly honey his voice is more raspy than usual he trying to smoke this as a god which he don't need to be smoking when he's sick baby you trying to get better Mm -mm. And, and child smoking them cigars probably would have had his immune system compromised you know what i'm saying probably would have been able to fight it out more probably would have been able to be a little you know what i'm saying asymptomatic been able to have a little ginger shot a little spoonful of mustard a little cup of tea and, and shake that off real quick by the next day you know what i'm saying but he goes smoking these cigars <laughs> and this is definitely you know another implication of the changes that happen when you you know what i'm saying all of a sudden have kids and of course they didn't have the kids the kids had them <laughs> kids in a drastic situation and Bernie Mac took them in right so another display of the adjustment that he has to go through now being a sudden full-time father figure to three kids all in different age groups so with that being said he like I ain't been sick in years you know, basically given that his immune system has always been in tip-top shape. He take care of himself. He is healthy as a horse until, as he say, them doggone kids. Them doggone kids. <coughs> them doggone kids. <laughs> and, of course, he like the only reason he's talking about it so bad. He like, yeah, I know y'all see him. He like, the kid's so cute. The kid's, the kid's so cute and cuddly. And that's how folks be thinking, child. Oh, it's going to be a cakewalk. The kid's so cute. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be fun. Well, child, kids come with underdeveloped immune systems. And what he said, the, the teeth ain't sharp enough. <laughs> Child, he done raised the kids for the field. But things that are low-key, high-key true, nothing to shame them for, but it's true. And it's things that the parent or, you know, the guardians or whatever have to adjust to and ultimately end up getting pulled into inevitably because you got to be around them, You got to care for them. So, and baby, he tried his best. He tried his best, honey. And that's why he's so salty. He said, only reason I'm talking about him like this is because they ruined my plans. All I wanted to do was go to Vegas. All I wanted to do was go, go to Vegas. <laughs> Paul Child, that's what he said about it. He said the kids are disease carrying midgets. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. He said they're like rats. Just without tails and their teeth ain't as sharp. That's what he said. 
Boy, when I tell you he snapped, he snapped. <laughs> and I don't know, I don't, it seems, it seems minuscule, but I know uh, midget is a derogatory term and all that. I don't know if he would have been able to say that this day and age on a show like that. But it's like, that's also the purpose and the theme of his show is that he's doing things that are not exactly politically correct and the kids are kind of a tool that's helping him change his image and kind of like smooth out his rough edges so we get basically a flashback picking up you know in the real time of it all him having his you know meeting of the men's is they having a poker night and whatnot and it picks up in the middle of his friends telling him he ain't gonna make that vegas trip because he's a father now he got kids now and things change honey when you get them kids so one way or another that adjustment is gonna throw a wrench in his plans and they're trying to tell him he's trying to you know what i'm saying argue with him like nah um me super mad da, da 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 and wanda walks in in the middle of the conversation and she telling him that she going to bed and he like oh y'all showtime over so hey shout out to them okay real father real man because wanda came in there and said she going to bed and he thinking that mean it's mr nasty time so he basically ready ready to send his friends home like showtime over I gotta go lay that thing now. Yeah. But she like, nah, 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 I'm going to bed because I'm tired. Okay. You can you can continue your little, you know what I'm saying, bachelor says, chilling with your friends. And he like, all right, cool, cool, cool. And she like, nah, whenever you ready to get back into father mode, remember to send out them invitations for Brianna's birthday party. And he like, I got you, shouty. And I drop it like it's hot for me right quick, right fast. And she do a little drop like, oh, yes. And they had that moment. I love the display of their relationship. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. <laughs> but so she go off and his friend is like, you know, one of his friends is like, oh, birthday party? Yeah, dog. You ain't going. You ain't going. All them kids going to be over here. All them germs. Uh-uh. You, you going to end up getting sick, my dude. Because he already know. Because his friends, they already got kids. So they already know him. And Bernie Mac is like, Nah, nah, it ain't gonna be like that. I ain't having everybody and their kids and their mama, cousins, sisters, brothers, and all that over here. It's gonna be a small, intimate family gathering, couple of her little uh, favorite friends or whatever. That's it. That's all. Period. In that order. In that order. In that order. In that order. And his friend wages a bit. Okay, he like, uh, see, nah, see, see, you talking all that? You gonna get sick? Bernie like, nah, nah. My immune system got me through the '80s, Playboy tisk okay tisk I, I you know he, he said his, his immune system got him through the 80s but um I, I would hope that condoms and you know the practice of safe sex got you through the 80s um but yeah so <laughs> his friend is like uh now super mac i bet you ten dollars that you get sick and his other friend is like, oh, I want a piece of this action, baby. And I'm going to up that ante. I'll get you $20 that not only he gets sick, but he don't make the Vegas trip because he gets sick. <laughs> okay. And Bernie Mac is putting his foot down. He said, look, ain't going to be like that because I'm different. Yeah, I'm different. I'm different. Yeah, I'm different. And ain't going to be all that. Y'all making too much about all this. It ain't even about nothing. But then we get a cutaway to him picking Brianna up from school, baby girl. And the teacher gonna come out talking about, um, we heard that Brianna is having a birthday party and you didn't invite the whole class. Lady, you don't get the gone. And of course she got this information in the first place from baby girl. So child, kids be kids, you know what I'm saying? But me and her would have to have some more conversations about certain things that should be kept in the house. But while we talking about certain things that should be kept in the house, and kept on the hush, let's get on Bernie Mac real quick. <laughs> because when the teacher tell him that baby girl told her about the party and him not allowing her to invite everybody, he gonna turn to baby girl talking about, Brianna, you said that? You, you, you ratted me out like that? I didn't, I didn't say that, miss. I didn't say that. Problematic. 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 Because <laughs> when you put it that way, you reprimand them baby girl for essentially telling the truth, which she likely did out of excitement and because she probably wanted her whole class there. So you should touch base with her seeing why, you know, what that's about. Do you want your whole class there? Is it a problem that, you know what I'm saying? Um, but also saying, oh, you ready me out. Like that's problematic because it's like specifically in the black community, you know, 
what stays in the house, what happens in the house stays in the house. And it's a time and a place for that, but that's not always good because it could be some things going on at home that actually need to be said to people outside of the house so that something can be done about it. And so that's why I say, you know, a whole conversation would have needed to be had and not just, you know, reprimanding her for essentially telling the truth because that could set up a pattern for tragedy. You know what I'm saying? And then also turning and lying in her face <laughs> lying in the teacher face and lying in brianna face after you've reprimanded her for telling the truth and then if and when she starts lying then you're gonna try to reprimand her for that and you're gonna have too much of a leg to stand on because it's gonna be like pick a struggle which one is it do you want her to be truthful or do you want her to just lie for you or like you only want her to tell the truth that you approve of you see what i'm saying very trickery dickery doc slippery slope okay so yeah, a uh, bigger conversation that needed to be had. Also, a bigger conversation to be had about Miss Lady, cause he like, uh, ma'am, you know, I ain't tell her that. Da da da. And uh, the teacher's like, you can't do that. You can't do that. We have a policy that you you have to invite the whole class. And he like, so you telling me that you gonna dictate that I have to bring these germy, nasty, filthy kids into my house? And she like laugh it off, and it's like, I I already took the liberty and invited the whole class for you. Oh, uh, ma'am 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 now granted he should not assault kids at any rate but what i'm saying is you done invited all these folks over to this man's house now he could have strikingly good reason for not one of the folks at his house which i feel like all them germs and stuff is a good enough reason let alone you don't know what the man got in his house you don't know how he may react to all them random folks at his house okay so you could be putting them kids in danger you could be putting their parents in danger you put yourself in danger okay that is uh overstepping the boundaries that can turn into trespassing all types of stuff like how you gonna tell this man who who he gotta let in his house because his daughter go to the school that she work at i mean his niece what but you know everybody else is like it's their kids and whatnot like huh huh uh, -uh. problematic problematic but like i said it's for brianna and if she wants the whole class there, then, okay, cool. We can make some shape for Brianna. Tisk. But after the party, honey, I was going to need to have an after party with the school officials to see what rights you got. So if I can tell me who I got to let up in my house. I ain't got to do nothing. And like Bernie said in his confessional, baby, you going to dictate that I got to let them up in my house and I should have the right to bop them upside the head if they cough, sneeze all that good stuff that ain't good stuff but you know what i'm saying they come up here spraying out them germs i should have the right to bop them now granted like i said he should not bop them and he said he ain't gonna bop them but he should have the right because like i said you don't know how that man carry on stuff in his house and you don't invite these folks to his house against his will so whatever happened should fall on the school because y'all did that now nah. now baby we get to the party honey and it ain't even been no time the party ain't even started baby the kids is just coming in and wanda standing up here talking to the parent of this one little girl who they have identified as patient zero her nose running they ain't paid no attention to it because you know they having a little conversation and this is what i was talking about you know you can't stop everything you can't keep your keen eye on every little thing you know what i'm saying because they up here having a conversation yeah but they need to have a conversation with each other in order to get to know each other and see how they run their lives and raise their kids and all that good stuff to see like should i let my kid you know interact with this kid come to this person's house without me all this stuff so they trying to handle one thing meanwhile it's another thing going on such as this little girl knows running and she done wiped it off with her hand <sighs> then wiped it off with her hand and now she's gonna go put that hand on everything else mm, mm, mm. and just that quick she done went and uh grabbed the hand of another child and running off to play with him and whatnot now that's four hands that's four hands right there finna be touching on everybody else and everything else. Ooh, child. And see, just like that, them four hands done walked over with their four feet into a crowd of multiple hands and feet and noses and mouths. And baby, meanwhile, across the way at a party, burning over there fixing punch for two other little kids. And one of the little kids, one of the little kids tapping on his shoulder being a, a nuisance. <laughs> and the other little kid done sneezed dead off up in his face. Uh-uh, <sighs> honey, now. The little boy that the little girl hand that she took, the little girl went over there and touched the little boy hand, grabbed his hand, and they walked off into the crowd of little kids. Now that little boy is thumb wrestling with another little girl. Now she got it. And just like that, Bernadine brought over like a bowl of candy or something. Now, 
all them kids gonna be putting their hands in their candy. Who child? Ooh, ooh. And so the little boy, <laughs> which is played by the, I would imagine that he's uh in his twenties now. I would assume that he and I are not that far apart in age. But of course, on here, he's a little boy, and he was a child star. And it's the little boy that played on uh, Are We There Yet? and Are We Done Yet? He's in that franchise. He played Neil Long's son in that movie. That was Neil Long, right? Huh. I believe that was Neil Long. What's an I like that? No, it wasn't I like that. It was Neil Long. Yeah. So Ice Cube found his way back to Neil Long. Ha. <laughs> because, you know, Neil Long was Debbie and Friday. Ha. 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 Cute. Anywho, the little boy tell Bernie. I think we're all ready for cake now, Bernie. Bernie got to get him together. First of all, now he, he correct him about, you know, telling him what everybody ready for. Uh, sir, I'm hosting this party. You just enjoy, okay? And go wash your hands. Secondly, you know, Bernie Mac ain't say that part. But what he did say was, secondly here, that's Mr. Mac to you. Say it. And little boy say, Mr. Mac. Yeah, Mr. Mac. I don't care. Oh, you see all that? You ain't supposed to be seeing him on TV. No way. Well, you know, you can see him on TV on this show. But as far as his stand up and all that stuff, you, you ain't supposed to be watching that little boy. Be calling him Bernie. It's Mr. Mac. It's wrong chip. <laughs> but this party is also revealing uh, the different ways that all of the kids have been raised. Um, and some kids, like my cousins, I have some cousins that they call, uh, my aunt when she was still alive, they called her by her first name. And some of them, because it's quite a bit of them, uh, some of them would even call their fathers by their first name as opposed to calling them mom and dad. So, you know, that that's also a thing that also can play a part. And like I said, you know, showing the different ways that kids are raised. Um, and like I referenced that conversation that Wanda was having with the with the other parents of patient zero. Like, yeah, they're trying to like, the parents have to get to know each other. And it's, it's uh, parties and gatherings and stuff like this that allow that to go on. So you can see uh, what types of people your kids are going to school with. And you know, the outside influences that they'll have in their lives. So yeah and that's also why bernie needed to be able to correct him in such a way because he does need to know that even if he is coming from a household where his parents require him to call them by their first name like michael jackson um and all of those siblings the jacksons they would call joseph joseph they didn't call him daddy or father they would call him joseph so uh yeah but that's not appropriate in everybody's household so yeah Moving on through the party, and we're doing a pinata. Uh, all the kids taking turns, taking a hit at the pinata. Baby girl is doing her thing. She ain't get it though. She ain't hit it, and she walks off. You know they pass the bat, and I was thinking that the bat was gonna be the carrier, but no. What happens is baby girl walks off, and Wanda is orchestrating this part of the party, and baby girl goes over, and Wanda is like, "Yeah, high five, high five, and they high five. Baby girl so happens to high five the little black girl that was thumb wrestling with the little black boy who held the hand of the little snot nose girl <sighs> now baby girl got it <laughs> just that quick honey just that quick and you know when they pop that pinata all that candy gonna fall and all the kids gonna run putting their hands all over the candy and lo and behold that's exactly what happens and what they show specifically is everybody rush for the candy baby girl grab her candy jordan gotta be an annoying big brother middle child syndrome having ass individual and rushes down there to fight her for candy so now you all up in her time space and place fight her for this candy that she done put her nasty hands all over now jordan got it now it's time for cake everybody gathering around jordan still middle child syndrome af gotta insert himself brianna is you know the sensor fixture to be like in front of the cake and jordan just can't let her be right there right so gearing up for the cake Everybody gathering around. Jordan all up in baby girl's time, space, and place. Both of them now got it, okay? So, not only is baby girl about to blow the germs all over this cake when she blow the candles out, right? But also, you got Jordan here who now has it all up in the time, space, and place of it all. So, he's breathing on it just like she's breathing on it. And then she also turns and kisses Vanessa. So, now Vanessa got it. And all three of them are right in front of the cake breathing on it amongst her literally having to blow over it cake got it so whoever eat that cake got it and we're gonna revisit that cake mm -mm -mm. so child lo and behold the next day you already know all three of the kids sick now bernie wakes up to hearing them coughing and gagging and 
sounding like they dying from the next room, huh? He going up to peep in on them. And it's baby girl and Vanessa that got it bad. Real bad. And Jordan is just laying in the middle like, you know what I'm saying? Like tensed up, like he's trying hard not to be involved, right? So Bernie walk out. Wanda walk up and it's like, yeah, what's going on? Bernie like, uh, 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 don't, don't go in there. Don't go in there. They sick as dogs. Sick as dogs, I tell you. Wanda go on in there to go check out, you know, she's the mama. She's the nurturer. <laughs> you know, you know, Bernie has his, his nurturing attributes as well. But just hold that thought. So, Wanda go on in there, get everybody up, check their temperature. And before we get to the point of her actually checking their temperature, we get another confession up from Bernie. And Bernie is like... Dog on kids. I know that they did this on purpose. Mm -hmm. Got sick on purpose because they're trying to ruin my plans. They know what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. Probably Nessa idea. Yep. Yep. Not burning. <laughs> Nessa do be with the trickery dickery dog. But I don't think that she would go that far. Like, <laughs> goodness. So, honey, their temperatures are in the hundreds. Nessa got 101 temperature. And Wanda is like, oh my gosh, my poor babies. And with that, I want to point out how naturally Wanda has adjusted to the motherhood of it all also uh much like I pointed out the difference in Jay in the pilot episode versus Jay in the second episode um I kind of want to point out a difference in Wanda from the first episode versus the second episode because even though I feel like she's adjusted easier than Bernie in the first episode Wanda is a little more like Bernie. She still is like, you know, open to the nurturing aspects and, you know, understanding of them being very vulnerable. But at the same time, she's still very much so in her hot girl energy. Like, I don't want to sacrifice my shoes. I don't want to sacrifice my shopping sprees. I can't call out at at and I still got to get the bag. You know what I'm saying? Again, I kind of wish that they would have kept the AT&T job aspect of it all because it would have been interesting to see her um, have the career balancing element to her character as well. But, you know, it is what it is and I like it how it is uh, at the same time. But yeah, she has become like quite a natural to the motherhood of it all. And she's going in maskless, relentless fearless and all of that you know what i'm saying to go in there and tend to them kids she ain't worried about getting sick none of that you know what i'm saying she doing what she got to do as a parent and we love her for that but yeah i just wanted to point that out so jordan is seemingly fine now i can't really tell if he is mimicking bernie whereas you know like in the first episode whenever jordan would cry or have his moments bernie would be like you gotta be a man Stop that crying. You be a man. Da, 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 da. You know, Wanda had had a conversation with him about he is not a man. He is an eight year old little boy. OK, but even still, you know, the outside influences of society, you know, classmates, you know, where he go to school and all of that. It all still plays a part. And, you know, there's still that thing where Jordan may be mimicking what he's witnessed of Bernie and also what he's experienced of Bernie. So Jordan may very well feel sick, but. He may be trying very hard to hide it, much like he's seen the men in his life do, i.e. Bernie and what Bernie has, you know, impressed upon him of be a man. Don't cry. Can't let him see you sweat. Don't show no weakness. You know what I'm saying? It could very well be that. Or he could be asymptomatic. But I doubt that because I seriously feel like Jordan is a crack baby. And I'm not saying it as an insult. I, I really feel like Jordan is the <laughs> definition like they're not saying it but they're showing what a crack baby i.e a child whose mother was doing drugs while pregnant with him like how some of them may turn out uh specifically as a uh, adolescent he is so yeah i don't think that he's asymptomatic i don't think it would make sense for him to be asymptomatic because he has asthma and because they ain't saying it but in my eyes, from my observation, Jordan is a crack baby, which means his immune system is not that strong. And I'm not saying that all quote unquote crack babies are a monolith in that way, but Jordan is a child and the way that they are displaying his characteristics, 
if he is a crack baby, it wouldn't make sense for his immune system to be in tip top shape to where he's asymptomatic. That just that just that just wouldn't be consistent, even in episode two. Like it's, it's not consistent. So my theory here is Jordan knew he was sick and he felt sick already, but he was trying to mimic his uncle and mimic the men that he's seen and not let anybody see him sweat. So with that, he's like, you don't have to check my temperature. I feel fine. And him saying you don't have to check my temperature is like another indication that he probably does feel sick. And he know that if she check his temperature, it's going to be blatant. Um, so, yeah, cause I, when I first watched it, I was like, so he would he want to go to school that bad. I mean, Jordan kind of a nerd. So, yeah. But at the same time, like, like, why do you want to go to school that bad? But, you know, watching it again, I don't think it's that he just want to go to school or was asymptomatic or nothing. I feel like he was trying to be a man what he has been shown a man does and how a man carries himself you'd be sick as a dog but don't let nobody see it don't let nobody see your weakness you know what I'm saying I feel like he was doing it but so yeah all that being said one was like okay you go ahead to school Bernie gonna take you Bernie grumbling and whatnot because he like boy uh, you know I like to watch TV at this time <laughs> so they all geared up getting ready to go in the car pulling off everything's fine right they didn't even get up out the driveway before Jordan started throwing up his life, honey. Started throwing up his life and started having a whole meltdown all at the same time. And child, Bernie started having a little meltdown of his own. He like, boy, don't lay in it. Don't lay in it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, gosh. Then, got to get him out. When he got the hose, hose everything down. Honey. <laughs> Ain't this uh, this got to be something somebody experienced uh, for real. Like, parents be experiencing that? Like, your kid tell you that they didn't eat something that you wanted and then... They have a moment where they throw up and you got to clean it up and then you see the evidence of their lies. <laughs> That's what uh, happened with Bernie Mac and Jordan in this moment. Bernie is cleaning up his puke and he looked like, that boy lies in my face. Say he didn't eat my poke chop. But he did because it's in like the proof is in the puke. Huh, terrible. And you know we got another confession from Bernie himself, honey. The fact that he said 2002 as opposed to 2002. <laughs> 2002 do sound good though <laughs> but honey he's in his feelings he said america don't judge me you be mad too 2002 cadillac escalade fully loaded leather seats diamond in the back you know the rest <laughs> it can be clean man it can be clean but it brings something to mind also because of the way that men think a lot of men think of their cars as women and a lot of men have this like purity perception of women and what it is to be a woman so they love the idea of their woman being untouched like a virgin even if they're not a virgin they like the idea or at least the imagery that their woman is like a virgin right so correlating that to the car it's like, even though you know it can be cleaned, it's fucking with you because you feel like your car has been deflowered now. <laughs> oh, very interesting. Very, very interesting. <laughs> so then he holds Jordan down in the shower. And again, he's impressing upon Jordan. Take it like a man. Take it like a man. Like a man. Problematic. <laughs> like, I know what he means. But it just uh, goes back to what I was saying about Jordan trying to act like he wasn't sick. But so, after he holds Jordan down, we get another confessional. And this, <laughs> I love these displays of like, he's so comfortable in trying to do what he want to do. But he really can't do what he want to do because he got to tend to the kids. Not only has he got to tend to the kids, but he got to tend to sick kids. So, he and his confessional, socks on his hands. Bandana around his mouth acting as a mask. He all like covered up and everything. He like, yeah, look at me laugh crack your jokes sticks and stones may break my bones but he can't even finish his statement because jordan yelling hollering about he cold so bernie stop run in there put the thermometer in his mouth jordan's like, i'm cold i'm cold bernie like nah you're not cold it's just the chills trying to fight your fever which is true though his experience of it is that he's cold but bernie put the little thing over him to run back try to get back to his confessional and he come back like Okay, now where was I? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sticks and stones. Yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all laughing now. Just want to be laughing when I'm in Vegas at that roulette table. Da, 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 da. And he putting his little bonnet on. <laughs> in the midst of his statement again, he's interrupted. Jordan talking about, Uncle Bernie, you left the thermometer in my mouth. 
<laughs> just being a baby. No, he's a child. He's a child. So we don't let him be that. <laughs> and Bernie gets up, runs in, takes the thermometer, puts another blanket over him, runs back to try to do his confessional over again. But before he goes back to do his confessional, see, he spent a little more time in there this time because, you know, he had to get Jordan all swooped up, look at his temperature, all this, that, and the third. And while he in there, <laughs> Nessa cracking jokes. So it's so cute to me how Nessa is a lot like Bernie. And Nessa get out talking about, you know, that's a real nice look for you. Talking about his bonnet. <laughs> and Bernie talking about, oh, yeah, yeah, you, you know I took it from Unwanda. And then on the little, you know how they, they write on the screen, it's actually his. <laughs> and I'm like, ain't nothing to be embarrassed about. He got to keep his pro together. You know what I'm saying? He got to keep the hair right. And through this whole ordeal is what we really get to see Bernie's nurturing side. Because even though, you know, he's talking a whole lot of crap. But he is still being extremely selfless and he's being very nurturing and you can see that he knows exactly what to do like seemingly by instinct he knows exactly what to do for these kids and he likely knows what to do because you know that is likely a reflection of his mama and the reflection of the father figure that he did had I, I believe he said his granddaddy if I'm remembering uh correctly the conversation he had with Nessa in the first episode uh which child watch my review of the first episode <laughs> and you'll understand what i'm talking about but um big mama big mama might have been his grandma either way barney's mother and father figures that he did have that were positive his great attributes like him being nurturing to these kids despite you know his goals and plans and his stubbornness about like what it is and what it's going to be as far as he's concerned it says a lot about his upbringing and, and the village that he did have um because like i said watch the, the review of the first episode but it is revealed that <laughs> cats cats in the background please don't don't mind them but it is revealed in the first episode that barney had a similar uh, orphan type situation when he was a child and that's kind of what makes him and nessa a whole lot alike but yeah said all that to say we get to see Bernie's nurturing side, specifically as he, you know, drops everything that he's doing to go tend to them. But also the way he comes in, he puts the blanket over him, but then he also goes and gets some warm water and some towels. He comes back, puts it around Jordan's neck. And all of this is to create a balance in Jordan's body temperature because he's cold. But and I'm assuming that it might be cold water that he's using, actually don't don't quote me. but either way he's trying to create a balanced body temperature for jordan because he's having chills his body's trying to fight the fever you're gonna put that blanket over him but as soon as you put that blanket over him then he's gonna be hot so that's what's making me think that it may be it may actually be cold water that barney got and dipped the towel in there you know wet it up and he laced it around jordan's neck to create that balance you know bodily warm and then put a cold towel around your neck so that you can have potential to experience room temperature uh, you feel me as opposed to being overwhelmed by either temperature so yeah that lets you know that that's something that's passed down through generation and generation definitely black culture you know what i'm saying so that's what makes me feel like that's a reflection of Big Mama specifically. Something that he learned through Big Mama tending to him. And, you know, potentially watching her tend to other people. And that's a grand aspect of parenting. Having examples. You know what I'm saying? And you may not think much of it in the moment. And maybe you do. But even if you don't think much of it in the moment, when you need it, it'll come back to you like instinct. <laughs> so, yeah. Nessa being petty. She tells Jordan to tell Bernie to get her some juice bernie like why why you gotta talk through jordan why, why you gotta do all of that i'm sitting right here you can't talk to me directly and he like why you ain't asked me for the juice when i was just in here and nelson said tell him i wasn't thirsty again <laughs> jordan passed the message and bernie is like i heard her i'm right here ask her what i do to her to make her talk to me like she do nessa gonna hit him with oh you can't talk to me directly and you sitting right here <laughs> And Bernie's like, you the one started it. You the one up here passing messages through him. And Nessa's like, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> Petty Boots. Petty Boots. And that's why I said she is a lot like him. It just comes off a little different because she's a teenage girl. <laughs> and it also shows you, like, the difference in how society teaches people to perceive things. Because you see Bernie 
be that way and it's just oh bernie just being bernie bernie just being a man or he just being an old man or whatever but with somebody like nessa a lot of people would look at it and say oh she got an attitude she got a bad attitude just a little just a little bitch just a little bad attitude having a little girl just just disrespectful little girl what an actuality no she just like her uncle <laughs> now granted you know children need to be corrected at times people are flawed but yeah if it's meant for you to get you you get exactly what i'm saying you get exactly what i'm saying it's the same thing happening on two separate sides of the coin but more people will demonize nessa versus bernie and it's not just because he's an adult it's also because he's a man and she's a girl she's a feminine being and not much grace is given to feminine beings specifically those who are perceived to have an attitude which what it really is is that they just don't come off as the picture perfect image that people think girls or women are supposed to be and it's not always bubble gums and rainbows and all that shit and also a girl like vanessa has every right and reason to have an attitude no it doesn't give her a right to be you know a nuisance or a menace to society or anything but it doesn't mean that you villainize her either well I, i'll do a whole video um on that because child we'll be here another couple hours if i go so deep into that but yeah i would like to say they exactly alike but a lot of people would probably perceive nessa different because she's a girl and like I said, if she was a woman, she would still be perceived different because she doesn't come off the way that a lot of people want or expect women and girls to come off. So he get back to trying to do his confessional and whatnot. And again, he's being interrupted by the yelps of Jordan and Nessa. So Jordan is like, I need a cough drop. Nessa like, where's my juice? Jordan like, where her juice set? Child, they got the most going on. So Bernie run back in there. He spraying disinfectant spray galore. He is, like, he going to war, honey, like he done stepped into the battlefield. Throwing down blankets, he tossing juice, he spraying galore, like I said, doing the most. He about to head out. And Jordan is like, my cough drop. So, child, Bernie tossed the cough drop, and they show, they put it in slow motion. <laughs> Jordan catches it, pops it in his mouth, baby. It is mission accomplished. So we think, so we think. So, Bernie get back to trying to do his confessional, and he's like, I know y'all think I'm being dramatic. But let me tell you, 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 you wouldn't think it was dramatic if you ever been to Vegas. If you ever, you ever been to Vegas with the boys, doing this and that. And now he gets interrupted by baby girl. Baby girl done threw up. If you hear a dog, please bear with me. I'm not letting him outside right now because I ain't going to get nothing done. Okay? So bear with me, please, please, please. Thank you. <laughs> so he going to get her cleaned up. Baby, he is stressed. Ah, in that bathroom. He done got the throw up cleaned up. And he tell her, go get in the tub so he can hose her down. So, get that accomplished. The next morning, he get himself all, you know what I'm saying, spruced up, groomed up, all this, that, and the third. He checking himself out in the mirror. He like, oh, tongue still the same color, eyes still the same color, skin smooth, hair popping, all that. Feeling himself. He feel like he done accomplished a lot. He feels like he about to be able to take his trip, honey. He doing a little dance through the house, doing a little celebratory song making on the spot and all of that. And he want to celebrate with a little snack, a little something to eat him, okay? Go up in the refrigerator. He like... Eat something healthy? Hell no. He should have ate something healthy. He should have, honey. Because the option that he went with was that God forsaken cake. Ah, so you already know. Bernie's got it. Whatever it is, Bernie's got it. So we know Bernie's sick now. He and his confessional. Honey, coughing his head off. Now, he like, I took all the precautions. I did everything I was supposed to do. You saw it, America. You saw it. Them dog on kids. Friends done left me, went on to Vegas. I didn't that mean that somebody won them at least 30, 40, 50 dollars also. Because you remember that bet that they placed <laughs> on him getting sick and not being able to attend, honey. But maybe they ain't get the extra money just yet because he is determined to get a little shut eye and catch the red eye. <laughs> so, similar to what I said in the beginning, like, yeah, he might be able to, he could have been able to catch up with him if he had got a head start. He should have been taking his ginger shot. See, that's, that's where he missed the mark on it, okay? He was smoking them cigars, and he wasn't regularly taking his ginger shots, his lemon water, his apple cider vinegar, <laughs> all of that. <laughs> so, like I said, he thinking he going to get a little shut eye and catch the red eye. But that ain't what happened. That ain't what happened, honey. That ain't what happened at all. The next morning, he still laid out, sick as a dog. Wanted to walk in there and say, the kid's feeling a little better. 
They ain't running fever no more. So I'm gonna go ahead and take them to school. You'll have the house to yourself in peace. Now, child, she say that, but then turn around and say, uh, baby girl still got a little little tidbit. And are you gonna be okay? You know what I'm saying? Here with her. Nessa tries to stay home to babysit. I don't think she was just trying to get out of school. I think she was really like, I stay here to keep a load off of you because baby girl is a handful. And of course, Nessa know that because Nessa been their mama up until the point they move in with Bernie, right? So Bernie feel like she just trying to get out of going to school. He blocked it and he like, uh, 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 we'll be fine, we'll be fine. Da da da. So they handled it. Wanted to tell him, you know, do she do he need anything before she go in? All this that in the third, she gonna bring him his ginger ale with the bubble stirred out, and that's gonna help his stomach. And this brings me back to what I was saying about Wanda earlier, making these adjustments so seemingly easy. I said seemingly, okay, because they don't mean that she don't have her own struggles or whatever. We just focus more on Bernie because it's his show, and of course, um, you know, how society stuff be. But also, it's his show. He is the star, so we focus more on him and his confessionals and all that but all that to say women for the most part are naturally nurturers um let me rephrase that feminine beings are naturally nurturers and everybody has feminine energy right so if you tapped into it and you function in it aware of it in tune with it you have a nurturing attribute much like Bernie he's a man but he's in tune with his feminine energy to some degree to be able to nurture the kids in the way that he does and in the way that he did house another what I'm saying is women as a collective are conditioned to be mothers of society and you know there are some remnants of slavery that play into that also black women having to be well, for one, not able to be actual mothers and nurturers to their own kids, but having to be mothers to their master's children. OK, so uh, I say that to say as well that all women are not naturally in tune to their feminine energy in that way. But women as a collective are conditioned to. So a woman can do that naturally and feel resentment because that may not be what she wants to do at heart i'm saying all that to say <laughs> and i know i keep saying that phrase but i'm saying all that to say that bernie is having a harder adjustment even though he is in tune with his feminine energy he's having a harder adjustment because men are not encouraged to be in tune with their feminine energy whereas wanda is making it look easy Regardless of if it's easy to her or not, she's making it look easy because women as a collective are conditioned to do that. <laughs> so, out of all I just said, I hope that made sense as to what I was pointing out about Wanda's seemingly easy adjustment to the motherhood thing. Because as we see in this particular scene, she is also being mothering, she is also mothering Bernie as he is sick acting like a baby <laughs> which a lot of men tend to do when they get sick they turn into whole babies <laughs> but so yeah she's gonna store his bubbles out oh she's she gonna rub the uh stuff on his chest and not making fun of him because she's his wife they should do that for each other <laughs> they should do that for each other but i just wanted to point out the difference in conditioning therefore the difference in how seemingly easy they adjust to their new life with the kids. But yeah, so Wanda asked him if he needed anything else. And he asked her to rub the Vic's ass on his chest. And it gets a little, you know what I'm saying? It get a little hot. It get a little bothered, all right? And then we cut to Bernie's confessional because he like, oh, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. That's too much. Y'all ain't gonna get out of that, okay? Sometimes be sacred between man and wife, okay? Y'all just wanna be all over everybody's business. But y'all ain't gonna watch y'all rub that stuff on me. Uh-uh, no sir, really. So, Bernie comes to soon regret being left at home with Brianna because baby girl don't understand that adults get sick and need a break too, right? Because she stopped. And she comes in, Uncle Bernie, Uncle Bernie, will you play with me? And he's reluctant. He's trying to explain to her that he's sick. She's not getting it. So he, you know, goes along to get along. All of that gets up. She want to play with dolls. I love the fact that she had some beautiful black dolls as well, okay? 
Yeah, ma'am. Um, so they playing a the game. She is on him about how he playing the game because of course he's sick. He ain't trying to do all that. Uh, and she, you like, oh, you want to go to the store playing with the dolls? He like, uh, uh. Uncle Bernie, you're not doing it right. And he like, baby girl, I, I, I don't, I don't want to play with dolls. He say dolls. I don't want to play with dolls. <laughs> no, I don't want to play with dolls. I'm, I'm too old to play with dolls. Can we do something else? A child, please bear with me because there's a whole lot, a whole lot of going on. It's a whole lot, a whole lot of going on. Shout out to the dude that originated that because I forgot his name. I'm so sorry. But yeah, everybody always wants to get live when I start trying to make videos. So let me go ahead and get through this. And I appreciate y'all's patience because <laughs> mine is running out. <laughs> But okay, so he is like, Can we do something else? I'm too old to play with dolls. Blah, blah, blah. So Brianna appeased him, but what she want to do instead is marching band again. <laughs> Barney is over it because, honey, he just want to get some reds. Remember, little shut eye, catch the red eye. Little shut eye, catch the red eye. Well, don't look like he's going to be getting no shut eye no time soon because Bree got a list of things that she's trying to do today. So they do that. Now Bree want to read, honey. He didn't know she knew them in words. I didn't know she knew them in words either. Maybe she was making some up. But honey, she read for hours. That book wasn't even that big. But she was reading for hours, honey. Ooh, we. I do not envy this this particular aspect of parenting because I be hearing folks talk about how they so tired of Baby Shark. They tired of Roly Poly Oli. They tired of what Peppa Pig, uh, Coco Melon. All of that, and, and, and they literally be having to indulge in that for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and hours to appease the kids. And it's like, ooh, we shout out to y'all, shout out to y'all, because I didn't like none of them them childish shows when I was a child. <laughs> like I like SpongeBob and what Fairly Odd Parents, you know, a few shows like that. But all them little kitty shows, Roly Poly Oly, all them little kitty 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 shows. I didn't watch that stuff. I was not interested. I was like, this is not the bee's knees. This ain't the work. Mm -mm. And so I wasn't into that stuff then, let alone let me have a kid now and have to appease them watching that stuff. Uh, maybe can we watch Fresh Prince? <laughs> Cause that's what I was watching when I was uh, a little kid. I was watching Fresh Prince, SpongeBob too, but I was watching a lot of Fresh Prince. <laughs> and uh, Kenan and Kel, I watched more Teen Nick than Nick Jr. But that's a story for another time. Anywho, baby, they did a whole montage of like watching grass grow. Then they showed like Bernie had done got old as crap. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's how long she was reading. <sighs> Goodness. So now Bernie is sobbing and Brie asked him, why are you crying? He said, baby girl, it's only 10 a.m. So child, apparently she wasn't reading for hours. It was just so boring that it felt like she was reading for hours. Whew. So she's talking about, you want to play parade again? He's like, no, baby girl, I don't want to play parade. Listen. So he sits her up on his lap and commence to setting a plan to distract her so he can get a little sleep so he said let's play hide and seek thing is he don't plan on seeking so he sent her to hide he started counting falls asleep on the couch according to the clock he fell asleep for like 20 minutes because it was like 10 20 maybe 10 25 when he woke up and baby girl is in like one of the next rooms boohooing and crying and whatnot he got to get up and go tend to her she said uncle bernie you hurt my feelings and you know he tried to clean it up and I'm like, try to be honest with her. You know what I'm saying? So I, pr I appreciate the honesty. You know, he tried to appease her. And then it got to a point where he said to be honest with her. Now, we talked about the honesty at the beginning of this review. Now, didn't we? Okay. So he explains to her that he needs some rest. And he going to set an alarm. And when, when she hear it go ding, ding, then they can get up and play and do whatever it is that she want to do. So, this thing about kids. <laughs> he has to be very specific. <laughs> and think about, you know, prepare for the prepare for what you didn't plan anticipate what you don't think you got to anticipate right so he end up on the toilet I ain't got no toilet tissue baby girl in the kitchen feeling faddling doing what she do so he like baby girl i need you to bring me some toilet tissue i need you to help me out i'm stuck on the toilet she like uh, -uh, uh you need your rest it ain't no ding ding it ain't no ding ding you need your rest <laughs> so he gotta go back and forth for her now baby girl baby girl it's okay it's okay ding 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 baby girl please please and she's talking about uncle bernie do you have a smiley face or a frowny face right now? Girl. <laughs> he frowning for more reasons than one. That's why he needs toilet tissue. <laughs> so she go ahead and try to help out, but she can't reach where the tissue at. So he tell her, thank you, and just go in the kitchen and fix yourself some juice and stay in there with it. So she does so, and he runs into the kitchen 
drawers and pants around his ankles looking a fool to get the uh well he didn't go in the kitchen baby girl was in the kitchen but he had to run through the hallway and that whole little living room sector you know all of this kind of connected or whatever to get his tissue baby it was so funny i'm gonna put the picture up there but it was so funny because <laughs> that's some real shit <laughs> no pun intended <laughs> so so everything ends up working out i imagine that he got to get him a little nap in we pick up with him and her napping on the couch having tuckered themselves out from doing some dress up baby <laughs> he had on this tyler perry-esque wig y'all know what i mean when i say tyler perry-esque wig so wonder walks in with jordan and nessa and she sees baby girl and bernie knocked out on the couch and she don't want to disturb you know she want him to get his rest so he can do whatever it is that he got to do want to do all that so she said she gonna take them out for tacos she's like y'all like tacos and doing this like no nah, i don't like tacos blah, blah, blah. he probably ain't never had a taco <laughs> but you know how kids be you know certain things look or feel or have a texture of a certain way when they a kid and it hits different and then when they get older they may they may um end up liking it but you know sometimes maybe not because type person i am the same things that i didn't eat when i was younger i don't eat now <laughs> Except I will say onions. Now, I'm not sitting up just eating onions, okay? But if they are cooked into something for flavor, then I'll tolerate them then. And if they chopped up really small, then I can eat them along with whatever it is they're in. And I like onion rings. But, yeah. Outside of that, nah. Anything I didn't eat when I was a child, I don't eat now. <laughs> but when they walk out, the door slams and it wakes Bernie. And he is running to the window trying to stop them because he tired of being there with baby girl by himself. He wants freedom like he done got his nap in now he want his solitude time his me time so while he's sobbing at the window like a kidnapping victim baby girl walks up to him and it's like uncle bernie remember when you said not to throw things on the floor because it could break well my doll didn't listen i forgot what she said the doll name was but she didn't listen so baby girl done broke something and she blaming the doll so this commences burning to sobbing even more <laughs> so we get to burn this final confessional and he's essentially reading the fuck out of baby girl she boring she dull <laughs> he's a miracle grown man shouldn't be left with with, with kids all day by you know what i'm saying this girl is dull it was the boring most boring day of my life da, 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 da. not realizing that baby girl standing at the door listening to everything that he's saying and she said uncle bernie you hurt my feelings and don't get me wrong because i would not you know what i'm saying say this to a child but in my mind i'm like girl suck it up you boring <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> but not nah, for real for real we love the kids and honestly it may not be the fact that she's particularly boring but she's a child and so therefore she's more effortlessly in tune with her imagination more so than most grown ass men you know so her activities may seem boring to him because he's not tapped into his imagination so she's seeing and experiencing bubble gums and rainbows and unicorns and all this other stuff because she's tapped into her imagination so she's having a greater experience she's having an entertaining experience and he's not because he's too indulged in the reality of it all and so you know having those interactions with kids are low-key how key meant to bring out your inner child and get you back tapped into your imagination <laughs> but you know he gotta clean this up because he done fucked up <laughs> so he pulls her over embraces her comforts her tells her that he's sorry and that he appreciates her presence and all the help she's been to him all day they've been together and he tells her go in the kitchen fix herself a snack and stay in there and eat it <laughs> so he can finish his confessional and talk to america is he saying so after she leaves, he turns back to the camera. The girl's still bored. She's still dull. I ain't, I ain't get to do nothing I planned. I ain't get to get no shut eye. I ain't get to catch the red eye. So no Vegas. But I did get to play blackjack. So it cuts away to him showing the kids how to play blackjack again. It started off with him being like resistant to playing with Brianna. But it allowed him to kind of tap back into his inner child. It's like they had a great time playing dress up when they got there. And then too, you know... If a child really is boring or just doesn't don't have your interest that's an opportunity for you to go into your bag of tricks and see what you can introduce the kids to that all of y'all can enjoy together and that's what he did and if it hadn't have been for that experience specifically his experience spending the day with brianna then it would have never occurred to him that he could play blackjack with the kids and that's a way that he could spend time and bond with the kids and you know like i said show them something new 
educate them on something new this and that and that kind of goes back to what i was saying earlier about the things that you see your parents do or the things that your parents introduce you to they may not seem like the bees and ease at first it may not seem so valuable to you at first or maybe it does but not as much as it would be valuable to you when it's time for you to pull it out as an instinct which there's a lot of that that has to be done when you are parenting and that is what bernie learned this episode he constantly learns it throughout the series but specifically what he learned in this episode is embracing something new and putting you know the kids in a position to embrace something new and it happened through <laughs> him ended up getting sick no matter how much he tried not to get sick and him like being determined to go to vegas to do his you know childless freedom thing but that's not really what he ended up needing he thought he needed that so much he thought it was like so valuable and important but he ended up finding a new value new values and bringing new values to the kids so yeah great episode funny ass episode and that's the end of the episode that's all america <laughs> And with all that being said, child, if I do say so myself, honey, I have milked this cow to And I am thoroughly appreciative for the exchange of vibes. And if you're feeling synchronized, please do me a divine design and like, share, and subscribe so that you can be one of the first to be back through these queenly quarters for the next time. And be sure to bless my comment section with your questions and conversations. And as always, I bid you all light, love, healing, and liberation. Emphasis on liberation. Mwah.